So for the B part, it says find the volume of the solid generated when R is rotated about the horizontal line Y equals negative three. So um, we want to orient our functions relative to where the axis of rotation is. Y equals negative three. We know that it is clearly below both of these two functions. It's somewhere down here, okay? So since um, it's beneath both functions, we're going to be using this formula right here. So always let the formulas guide you. They're really helpful. We're going to be using V equals pi times the integral um, from A to B of um, F minus A square minus G minus A square. Now, is it going to be the X or the Y? Notice that um, we are rotating in the direction of the X axis. So it's going to be the X. All right, so think about it. We have the two functions like this. And then we have the axis of rotation down here. So we rotate our, our radius is basically perpendicular to the X axis or in the direction of the X axis. All right, and then you just rotate that way. Um, so this is the formula we're going to use. So F is going to be the function on the top. A is going to be your axis of rotation. G is going to be the function on the bottom. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, write that down. So we're going to have um, the volume applying this formula to this situation is equal to pi times. Now, since we're using x's, we're going to take the x coordinates of a points of intersection. We already have them here. 0.15859 and 3.14619 times f is the function on the top and that's the logarithmic function minus uh, negative 3 so minus negative 3 of course is going to become plus 3 this right here is your um, outer radius square minus um, g is the function on the bottom x minus 2 minus a minus minus 3 becomes plus 3 quantity square dx okay so this is what you get if you're using the formula directly now let me let me set it up for you by actually using the whole idea of a composite um, a composite radius okay so let's say we have the functions like this well let me use a straight line <laughs> Well, I can sketch this first. So we have the function, the uh, and the uh, the function intersecting. Have the logarithmic function, your linear function, and the axis of rotation. And then what you're going to do is you're going to create your radius, a composite radius. All right. So this right here is your composite radius, and there are three points that we're going to extract to set up our formula. Okay. So we have a point on the top point in the middle and a point on the bottom okay so let me set, put my composite um radius here what i'm doing is um basically showing you why this is the case so there we have um uh, what do we have we have f on top this is f and then we have g and then we have a okay you notice the order. You can see here that A is less than G and G is less than F. That's why we use this formula. Now, this is the radius. What we're looking for is the area of the disk. I'm sort of the washer, all right? So how do we do that? What we need to do is we need to take the, um, we need to find the area of the outer disk, which goes from here, F, all the way down to the axis of rotation right there. Okay, so that's the first length we have to find. So the question is, um, how long is this length from F to G? How long is that? That this right here, that is our outer radius R. And since we're going top down, it's going to be F minus A. Oh, let's try that again. It's going to be big R is going to be F minus A. So that's why we have F minus A here. But we have to square it, of course, because it's pi R square. So that's the outer radius. Now for the inner radius, you're going to go from G 
Let's trace this out from G all the way down to A. Okay, G all the way to A, and that will help you figure out your um, your inner radius. All right, so this is little r, and then little r can be determined by finding G minus A. So that's why we have G minus A squared here. Okay, so when we subtract these two, all you'll be left with is this region right here, and when you rotate it, you have this nice little disk looking something like that. Okay, so that's um, basically the idea behind this, this setup. So remember, this is big R square, and then this is little r square. Now, let me show you a visualization to help you see what the resulting area will be after creating our disk and moving it from within our boundaries of integration. All right, so there goes the function. Uh, first thing we're going to do, let me show you what the resultant region will look like. So if we take that area and then region, yeah, area and rotate it around y equals negative 3, we can see that y equals negative 3 is clearly beneath uh, the two functions. And then there goes our slice right there, that little um, washer that we were trying to create. All right, so that's what it looks like. Now to um, find the volume, um, we're just going to integrate, find the accumulation of all the tiny washers that um, we found the uh, area of as a result of that formula. So that's where you have the integral from the lower bound of x all the way to 3.14619. And then that will be the volume of the resultant solid, this solid that you see right here. Okay?